I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about performance tools, material design, sliders, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we have a wonderful blog post over on CSS Tricks that is rounding up different performance tools for your website. Now, they break this up into several different sections from content delivery networks like Cloudflare and Max CDN, all the way through to performance testing, developer tools, and more. Now, what should you be using when you are analyzing the performance of your website? Well, the answer is every single one of the things on this page. Mm. Uh, no, first you'll start with a content delivery network, and what that's going to do is distribute the assets to your website around the world in order to deliver them to your users as fast as possible, no matter where they are in the world. Now, there are a few different CDNs to choose from over on the Roundup post here. Uh, pretty much you can just read about that and figure out which one makes sense for you. Next, there are a bunch of different performance testing services. And these things will tell you how your websites are doing, what is loading quickly, how quickly that first byte is served to your different users. And then some of these will even make suggestions about how you can fix that. Uh, one of those examples is Google PageSpeed, which will analyze and also give you hints for optimizing your site according to best practices. Now, something else that's kind of cool, there is a command line program to access page speed insights with reporting, and then you can find that in the post as well. I'm not going to go over all of these, but you can see there are a ton of different ones to choose from. Uh, next, there are performance testing tools and developer tools that you can use in order to check out how your site's going. And that's going to be something that you're going to be using locally, like Chrome's developer tools. And you can use the audits and network tabs to figure that out. Now, there are just a whole bunch of these things in this blog post. I really recommend you check that out in the show notes, which you can find right below this video. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is a blog post called The Making of In Pieces, Designing an Interactive Exhibition with CSS Clip Paths. Now, I thought In Pieces was a documentary about our relationship. This is actually in pieces. It is a website that showcases endangered species, kind of like Jason. And we can flick through here and look at these different animals. Look at this. And if you haven't heard of these animals, it's probably because they're endangered. Uh, each one of these animals is made out of 30 triangles or polygons. And as you flip through each one, the polygons rearrange themselves to create the new animal. Look at that. There's a red panda. That's, That's how pretty it works cool. In real life too, right? uh, not, not quite. Not quite. Uh, if we go back to the blog post here, this is a really long post on Smashing Magazine about how this was put together. It looks pretty simple visually, and it's a nice clean design, but it's basically based entirely on the C CSS property called Clip Path. Now, with Clip Path, you can do something like this. So you can take a div and apply the Clip Path property, and then give it a polygon that's basically a set of parameters. And so here we have three different coordinates, and each set of coordinates is where these vectors should go, and it forms the face of this polygon. So through this, you can start to imagine how you could create more complicated shapes using a collection of these triangles. So if we scroll down a little bit more here, there is some concept art for how these illustrations came to be, and then they used this special tracing technique. It's pretty cool. Definitely be sure to check that out. But then a little bit further down, they talk about how they did the animations. And this is pretty neat. They stored all of the animations, or all of the animals, I should say, in an array. And then they cycle through each one 
just by applying a different class. So all of the polygons rearrange themselves when the class changes. And to do the animations or the actual polygonal transitions, they do the same type of thing where they have a couple of different states. Here we go. There's state one, two, three, or even four. And every so often they use JavaScript to cycle through each one of these states. So they'll add a class and then remove a class. And the CSS will use a transition to actually go between the two states. So pretty cool stuff. There's a lot more in this post. I actually summarized it pretty quickly. But definitely be sure to check this out. Yeah, there is so much of that post, actually. You might want to read it um, in pieces. Next up, we have a project called Material Design Lite. This is a CSS framework that doesn't rely on any external JavaScript libraries to help you implement material design in your website. Hey, that sounds interesting, but let's just go ahead and look at some of the components and templates and demos. So, wow, look at this. Here's some badges that you can put on the site. Let's say, okay, hey, I have a bunch of notifications. Uh, click, dismiss, boom, done. Uh, there are buttons that you can put on your site. Look at that. That's a circular button oh, with nice. a plus inside it. That's now, my favorite kind of button. Yeah. And you can even put different colors on all these buttons. You're not limited to circles. You can also use rectangles and colors inside of rectangles. Man, at Google, they just thought of everything. There is literally no end. Um, except for those two things, actually. Uh, you can put cards in here. They'll have a little background with an icon on top and, and some text. So it's very easy to implement a card. You just have these several nested divs with all of these different styles that command them to implement this kind of card design. Now, pretty much everything you would expect from a CSS framework is here. And you can go ahead and customize it with a nice little preview button here on the side. So. If I wanted to preview this theme that was uh, different shades of green, that's what it would look like. And you get a little, little menu there with some links on the side. No, I don't like that one. Let me go ahead and try a different one there. That's, that's much better. Then just hit the download button and you are ready to go. Now, this is going to be a little tiny bit different than some of the other material design frameworks that we've had on the show because it doesn't require any JavaScript frameworks in order to load. Anyway, if material design is something you are interested in implementing on your site, make sure to check this out, and it could materialize on your own web page. Good joke. Uh, next up is. Did you say a single material? No, forget about that one. That was bad. Next up is a post over on the CodeDrops blog called Zoom Slider. This is a pretty good one. If you click View Demo, you can see what this looks like. So here we have a couple of different things. Now, when you say slider, is that like a mini burger? I don't see any hamburger menus. Really hungry? Yeah. We can slide through each one of these. And these are different Apple products. And if you click on one of these, oh, if I click the Zoom button, actually, it will zoom into them and wow. sort of show this screenshot here and give you some more information. You can click the X and come back out. Let's try another one. Let's let's try this Apple Watch. Look at that. Wow. wow. Pretty that. pretty amazing. Now you need electricity to make this work, you know. So I mean you could kind of call it the electric slide. So if we go back to the post here, you can see the HTML and CSS and JavaScript all the way down here at the bottom. Quite a lot of CSS there. And there's also a lot of JavaScript to make this work. So this is really a blueprint for how you might put something like this together. So they have all the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that you would need. You can download the source right here. But just a brief explanation as to how this is actually working. Basically, there is a zoom area. And then as the page gets scaled up, once the page is completely covered with the zoomable area, they actually bring in the text. So that is the zoom slider. Pretty cool. You could use that for, I don't know, hamburgers or any other kind of food product yeah. as an example usage. 
I think, you know, implementing that on your page would be a real win, you know, a, a landslide victory. Next up, we have a project called Summer Note. This is a WYSIWYG editor built on Twitter Bootstrap. So when you implement this in your page, you will have a very nice text editor right there on the page. Like, look, hey, this is me writing text. Wow. And then, wow, I could make that bold too. Look at that, Nick. That is the power that you can wield with this text editor. Now, it's summertime right now, but what do you use in the winter time if you want to make notes? Oh, no, you can use the same editor. Uh, the, the name doesn't change in the winter. So or, it controls the weather then? Or, or the fall. No, it doesn't. No, it just controls text areas on the page. Okay. I'm very confused, but continue. Okay. So um, this, is, this is what it looks like. And you can actually customize all of this uh, on the page. So let's say we want to put Nick's name in Comic Sans there and this nice shade of orange. Oh, that looks this is looking good. 36 Can point you font. Send that to me. I yeah, need I will. To change my email signature. <laughs> that's, per, uh, that's perfect. Um, so, <laughs> this is the example that we have right here, and you can actually customize pretty much everything about this. So, here's a couple of different versions of it. You'll notice that there are some more options over here. You can go full screen, you can have a view of the code, throw in tables, pretty much anything you want. Now, this is really easy to get started with. Uh, you just initialize the editor right on the page with this summer note function. You are pretty much good to go. Now, it's also themable, and there is a very thorough API should you want to customize it like a lot. You want to rip out every single part of it? Go ahead. You want to implement a new toolbar? You can do that, and it's just a short journey through the documentation to learn about how. So anyway, if you have a site that already uses Bootstrap, I recommend using Summer Note any time of year if you need a WYSIWYG editor for it. Very cool stuff. Well, that is all we have time for this week. I'm at Nick RP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cypher. For more information on anything we talked about, make sure to check out the show notes below this video. Thanks everybody for watching, and we will see you next week.